What's up, Gen Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Thank you for watching the number one college football show for this very special episode where we, I, get to talk with one of my favorite people in all the sports and culture entertainment. That is one Bomani Jones. So excited about this where we're going to talk college football. We're going to talk about Oklahoma. We're going to talk about Texas. We're going to talk about the SEC. We're going to talk about the ACC. We're going to talk a little bit about the Big Ten. We're going to talk about the future of college football. It is, I think, everything that those of you that have listened to Bomani's show on the right time have expected from come to expect from him and also what you come to expect from me. But Bomani is very important to me, uh, both as a dude in the game who just helped put me on, um, even was trying to help me figure some things out as I was really getting into what it is I'm doing here, uh, going from doing this thing in my apartment on YouTube, right? to being able to do this thing on television, to do this thing digital, to even arriving at Fox Sports. Um, I can't repay that kindness. I just can't. I can only say that that man has my respect for all time. But we bond because he wants rooted for Texas, and I'm an Oklahoma fan, right? So we'd be talking about not just that, but Miami and the heyday of whatnot. And also, I think it's important for y'all to know that Bomani's like encyclopedic about college football, like he got it. Like he'll recite the Heisman Trophy winners. I think if you want to bet some money, Pablo Torre, and hold him to that, also one of the smartest people that you've ever come across. Uh, his parents are academics. Uh, he did radio for so long, did television for a little while, was on HBO. And now he does this show, uh, The Right Time, that she's done for years on the YouTube. You should subscribe to that if you're already watching this on the platform. It's right there. I'm listening to his show. I'm a big fan of it. Big fan of this interview and this Really cool exchange. Please enjoy me talking with Bomani Jones. I'm pleased to be joined by host of The Right Time, a wave sports and entertainment podcast, Bomani Jones. Bo, how you doing? Good, man. How about you? I'm good, brother. I'm good. I wanted to start with this. You really dig college football. You've yes. always dig college football. So I got to yes. ask, when did you get started digging into college football? Man, so, you know, the thing that you and I have in common, though, in a weird sort of way, is Oklahoma football. So my mother is an OU alum. So, like, for her, this was a thing. And it's interesting because my dad's from Louisiana, that era where black people ain't rooting for the local team, right? But they were big in the HBCU football. But my mom is all like, OU football is a thing for them. And so I guess you start from there. It just then happens that I grew up in Texas. So my loyalties then wind up going in some different directions. But it's kind of... I you know in Houston, I think that people think about when they think about like the college football South, like they think of Texas as the high school football South. They think when you get to Southeast, there's more the college football South, but it's still really organic in Texas in particular, since there's eight different teams. You know what I mean? I do. And I'm also kind of interested in from your vantage point, right? As we getting into OU Texas, we can talk about Oklahoma all we want, but I'm, I'm going to just put it out there, right? Texas is always going to be a little bit higher on my tier of people I need to beat up on. But now that we're doing this SEC thing, yes, I'm curious. All right, let me put it this way. I was asked, would I rather go to OU, LSU, or Texas, Texas A&M? And I'm going Texas, Texas A&M because they hate each other. They, 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 they yes. hate each other. Could you, could you tell me when you got wise to what A&M was doing? And then, oh, yeah, 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 we hate them too. Well, see, so the thing with me is I didn't really, really like get into Texas for real until like when I was in high school. I was a dude went to high school while I ended up playing for them, right? So that like, you start talking about like 94 all, and it's like I really get there. I was rooting for them against Miami that one time, and that was a horrific idea. Um, but I I but I went to school in Aggie country. Like every like the school I went to, Walla High School and Walla, Texas, all those schools I went to out there, they are it's like it's maroon and white. The school fight songs, the Aggie War Hell. Like, that is them. They were all about it. And I would say overall, I love the people that I grew up around. I really do. But I also recognize that was not the team that I wanted to be on. Like, that was that was like I didn't I didn't feel the kinship to it because they felt uh the kinship to it. And you realize it don't take long. I think we moved to we moved to Texas when I was just before I turned seven. Mm. You knew immediately, like people are asking you, are you an Aggie? Are you a Longhorn? I'm seven years old. I don't have any idea what any of you are talking about right now. But they were already drawing lines at that point. I understand the Texas thing is no longer what you do, but I got to yeah, ask. Yeah, it made it impossible. Well, I mean, look, uh, we can get into it, but 
is it more fun to not be associated with what it is they doing? Especially now that we're getting into this time where I just I'm put it this way, Bo. I don't I don't like OU and Texas joining the SEC. I don't like it one bit. I don't like it one bit. First reason I don't like it is I like winning 11, 12 games. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. The Oklahoma oh, okay. shade is the big one. <laughs> just saying. You know, over there, people are like, it might be the fifth best team. Try seven, dog. Like, Ole Miss <laughs> over there winning. You know how mad I'm going to be? We go to Oxford, we lose game. Anyway, where, what I wanted to get to that was, is it more fun for you to watch Texas knowing what Texas is about and they might be getting what they deserve? Or, you know, are you going to pick up on Texas because A&M is A&M? Yeah, so this is interesting because, like, I used to root for the Falcons. But, you know, after the quarterback went to jail for fighting dogs, I just realized that was just a foolhardy mission. You know what I mean? Like, this was never going to pay off. And and I have been vindicated at every turn since I made that decision. But I still hate the Saints, right? Like, I still – I don't do the Texas thing anymore because of that damn song. And they just made it they, – they basically made it – I couldn't live with myself. If I kept riding with the people that just said, no, we're going to do this and you're going to like it. I don't have to like it. I'm not going to like it. But I still got my feelings about Oklahoma and the Aggies. That's just completely different. Right. Like that. I thought they should never play them again. Like every time somebody says something about they need to restart this rivalry. No, you don't. They walked them down with Case McCoy in the last game that they ever played at Kyle Field. Case McCoy. McCoy walked him down the field. And if I recall, Ryan Tannehill was the quarterback for Texas A&M. So you got a first-round pick at quarterback, and y'all got walked down by the other McCoy, okay? Right? The one with less physical talent. Think about what I'm saying to you right now. That walked him down. Okay, Never right. play him again. So, 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 one, I got to remind people that Colt McCoy got a little brother. Yes. Right? That's one. That's one. Two is... A&M had to do the quarterback that they moved to wide receiver. Yes. Okay? Now, I got my feelings about Paul Thompson and what he did at Oklahoma and whatnot, but one of the things you're not going to do is move to do the wide receiver, move back to quarterback, and you're going to go beat me up. That's not what you're going to do. Yes. Right? Yes. And then, I'm going to add to that, they go to A&M, A&M go to the SEC and immediately get good and fool us all into thinking, damn, they might have something going on there. I knew right? better. Kevin Summer, I knew Jeff better. Manziel. I knew I'm going to feel conflicted about this. <laughs> that ain't how it went. That ain't how it went. <laughs> I knew better. I knew it wasn't going to happen. You know how I knew it wasn't going to happen? Because they the franchise was still in College Station. I mean, I I knew that that was going to be like they got a big problem now. They didn't like they they kind of had their run. They had their chance. But my contention always was it remains, and I think it's in a way been vindicated. A and M's gotten a lot of players. Don't get me wrong, but what they really did was they opened up. Texas to the entire SEC West. And that's what we saw. We saw years where the best player in Texas is going to Ole Miss. Like you thought it might happen at LSU. You could see it happening at Alabama. When Greg Little went to Ole Miss, that, that's the day that Texas realized, you know what, I think we probably need to go to the SEC now because we won't be able to keep any players. And that's why I think OU got into a place where they probably needed to because they forever – OU's been a national recruiting team for the longest. They really don't have any other option. Like, there's a part of Texas that they can recruit that's closer to them. Houston has always been a little bit too far, even though they get the occasional Quentin Griffin, for example. Like, not that they ever did it, but they could. But they always had to go get guys from California. They always had to make moves, you know, to get players because there just aren't that many good football players in Oklahoma. You could get every single good one, and they did. Any player worth having, they got. But then they go get the others, right? All right, so... Number one, all those players are going to te- going to the SEC West, though. Game change. Okay, all right. So that part, you got that nailed, right? That that's to the wall, right? We don't always get the dudes that we should be getting from here. Josh Proctor went to Ohio State, Dax Hill went to Michigan, and I got feelings about that. But the <laughs> thing that I found most interesting about this move, to your point, was I ain't got no choice, right? Because LSU, they're gonna come over here. Uh, Florida, they're gonna come over here. Georgia, damn sure gonna come over here. And now you got to deal with. Alabama wasn't nobody when I was no child. I didn't care about <laughs> Alabama. I wasn't afraid of Alabama. And now Saban got that thing going in such a way that he, he still got his hands in it, right? He was at A-Day, right? He's going to be wearing the Alabama polo on ESPN. He's still in that program. And I got to believe that if you need somebody to close in a pinch, get to some parents, him and Miss Terry going to go do that for you. But we also get into this point where we got a, we got a 16-team league right? That feels like a juggernaut, but also one in which Alabama might not be Alabama anymore, and Georgia's still Georgia, but, you know, that that's another discussion. I'm curious, like, what are you going to do now 
if you are OU and Texas, knowing that you got to come in here and you got to win these games against Alabama, because I'm going to remind you, Bo, I got Texas, I got Tennessee, I got Missouri, I got Ole Miss, I got LSU, and I got Alabama on this schedule. Ain't no Vanderbilt here. Ain't no right. Vanderbilt. Right. So this is my thought. And I don't know myself how organized Texas and OU are with their NIL game, right? Because if anything we know about Texas, they got all kinds of money that they can't, like, get on the same page. Like, this is a this is a historical problem with this program. I always trust that OU is more organized because there's six, seven decades to tell me that OU is probably going to be more organized in what they do, right? There's no excuse for Oklahoma to have been so much better than Texas in the last 50 years. There's none. Right. Except for the fact that, oh, you want it more. I don't I've, I've always questioned how much te- I think Texas would like to win. I think that Oklahoma wants to win. It's not the same thing. Right. So to me, if they get their NIL money right, my thought is if Texas. You got to be careful taking too many players from the state of Texas because they, you know, they've got some there's some fundamental flaws in the ways that players are developed in the state of Texas. But they got to go back to getting all the best of them. And they should be able to go back to getting all the best. of them. it wasn't that long ago that Texas was getting literally even Tom Herman would have years where he could go through and literally get all the best players from Texas. Right. You if you get your money right, you can get a couple of Louisiana guys that LSU you can't evaluate talent. Yeah, they're overdeveloped. They yeah. get guys yeah. that are they, yeah. they they don't do the right math on why this guy is so good in high school. And it's been that case for a long time. Right. But to be fair, everybody else gets it wrong, too, because these classes are always super highly ranked because everybody's making the same mistakes. Well, knowing all of that. Right. Knowing that I'm looking at a Kalen DeBoer who had a a day that was very well attended. Jalen Milrow still not. All right. Let me get under Jalen Milrow right quick. This yeah. Where are you on him? I love Jalen. I really do. Uh, but he got he got the other Jalen tendencies, too. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to put the ball on the floor. I can't have no quarterback <laughs> put the ball on the floor. I maintain the Philadelphia Eagles lost to the Kansas City Chiefs because, boy, put the ball on the floor. Okay? Mm-hmm. Can't do that. And then, you know, he got that whole throwing the ball to the other team thing under control. But to the world and back, he beat Georgia. Right? And, and, and you can't say he didn't do that. And then he had that dramatic come from behind win against Auburn. So there's, there's that. Like, I like Jalen. I don't know if I like the... I don't like the 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 NIL, the what is it, LMK that he got on the shirt? L A N K. The like. Link. The like. I can't believe they did that. I can't, I can't help with that. But <laughs> he got he got something to him. Coming out of Katie Tompkins, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love this game. Mike Yersich got that job, decided he didn't want Jalen. Jalen took it personal. And then Nick Saban of all people said, You want to come play here? And that's always a bad sign to me. Because we talk about, you know, 247 rivals and whatnot on three, how we evaluate recruits. But Nick usually knows what he want to do with a dude, right? Yeah. And the idea that you could bench that dude and he's still going to stick around and come out there and give you what he got, I get behind him. That said, I just don't know what to do with him going into this season because on paper, Texas should have a better quarterback. Oklahoma should have a better quarterback. LSU should have a better quarterback. And yet and still, that dude be out there making plays. So the question that we're going to have about Milrow, and this can happen, okay? So I would say that the 2022 Jaden Daniels was a better player than the 2023 Jalen Milrow, right? But you can make a big offseason jump. That can happen. We've Mm. seen that happen. And I don't even know how big a jump he needs to make as much as he kind of needs to make refinements. Another great example of this, and I mean – I'm careful to use the man's name in vain, but the change between a 2004 Vince Young and a 2005 Vince Young was pretty noticeable, right? As passer, pretty noticeable. 45 to 13. Why are you bringing the bold stuff, bro? Okay, just I I couldn't remember if I got the count right. 45 to 13. Seven of them were a fumble return. So anyway, um, he can do it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I'm sorry. That fumble return was one of the best moments of my life. Rod Wright was running that back, and it was like, oh, wow, they're actually going to win this game. I forgot what that was like. Man, that was also – that's also LSU. That's also I – mean, you, know, you know, Liner is on this air. You know what I mean? I can't, yeah. I can't talk to nobody about nothing because of that game and 2004. Just We had Adrian Peterson doing what – I'm going to get out. I mean, you were right, making back, a though. point. Right. But I can see Milrow becoming that guy. And one thing we know – Alabama's going to have a five foot eleven, six foot tall, 190, 195 pound receiver or three 
um, built the exact same way with very similar skill sets, getting wide open. Can I, we know can, that. I, can I tell you that that dude is from down the street? His name is Cole Adams. He mm -hmm. wears 13, and he was making all sorts of plays in the slot, being five foot 10, 100 and nothing. That dude <laughs> that they said wasn't good enough to go down to Oklahoma and basically <laughs> do what Wes Welker was doing at Texas Tech with Gavin Freeman doing Oak with Lad McConkey. <laughs> but Lad McConkey's out there doing that on a on a sneaky four four, a sneaky four four. Well, I mean that's the thing. Like you know, Slade Bolton was that dude a couple years ago. They like to was. your point. They always got that dude, and he always out there making plays against dude. He dudes he should not be making plays against, right? Yes. Like I'm, I remember when uh. Nate got knocked out by one of them Paul dudes. I said, dude's name Nate don't get knocked out by dude's name Jake. It's the same <laughs> difference, right? It's the same difference. But on top of all of this, I'm not even sure what I can make of this SEC, except it's going to be loaded. The Big Ten is also going to be loaded. Big 12. Yeah, but, hold on, but, hold on, but you hit a big point. We talked about the 16. We didn't talk about that right fast. I don't know what to make of any of these conferences that have 16 teams. I don't know how I'm supposed to make sense of it. Like, it's going to be a real interesting adjustment for us this year yeah. where nobody plays everybody. Nobody comes close to playing everybody. And we're supposed to make sense of what these conferences are. I don't know how we're going to do it. I, uh, well, look, I am still getting around to saying things like the Big 12 and 16 teams. I'm also getting around to saying things like Big 12 and Houston. Um, by the way, how do you feel about that? Houston going in the Big 12 after, you know, they looked at them in the Southwest Conference and said, we good, we straight. There is no, very few people in this world have an argument that the man is holding them down or they are out to get me. But I have felt at every turn that the University of Houston is the most terrifying thing, particularly to Texas. And it's because Texas was so bad on race for so long that if they had let Houston get in the SWC before 1976, and keep in mind, the first 10 years of the Southwest Conference, they they went to the Cotton Bowl four times. Then the probation man came in and everything got shut down. And so Houston has always been like, can we get into the Big 12? Could we get into the Big 12? And for the people who don't know, Houston was dealing with coming off the aftermath of probation, but Baylor got in the Big 12 because by happenstance, the governor and lieutenant governor at the time happened to be uh, Baylor grads. By the way, two people who would not be reelected in the next election, just so you know, they just happened to get there at the right time and they got into the Big 12. Houston, this Houston is always, they I mean, they've won every conference they've been in. They have a chance to be dominant in just about every conference that they go in. And now, and they can do it here because if there's anything people from Houston have no desire to do, it's to leave Harris County. Why would they ever do that? I got uh, well. Uh, number one, I could talk about zoning. We could get into just how <laughs> Houston is cool, right? Yes. But I'm also gonna point out here that the statue that I'm still looking for Baylor to erect is Ann Richards. That's that's the one. Um, yes, I'll get on you that get anytime it. you want, because that's the reason that we. They were so sorry for so long. So bad. And then Mac Brown missed on Robert Griffin the third, and now we got to deal with Baylor, right? Like it's, it's all really that. To be fair, so did everybody else. A and M. This how this how you know A and M ain't really about nothing. They never have to answer for missing on those dudes. They have. They don't. They don't have to answer for missing on Robert. They don't have to answer for missing on Andrew Luck. They don't have to answer for missing on Colt. They don't have to answer for anything. They don't have to answer for anything at all. That's how you know. Don't nobody really believe what they be saying about them. No, and, and you look. Look, I also think you know we we. I think we agree that Kyler Murray is the best high school football player that state's ever produced, and they yes. fumbled Kyler Murray. Yes, they did. After, after, yeah. quick, correct me if I'm wrong though. Did they? Didn't they fumble Kevin Murray? And by that I mean boo him out of the stadium. It's interesting too. I couldn't believe that Kevin had his son go there, right? Because that wasn't gonna be Jackie Sherrill. I guess he figured because you know Jackie Sherrill is Jackie Sherrill, right? And so he figured, hey, it's Kevin Sumlin. We can make this work. Now Kevin Sumlin, who fumbled two five star quarterbacks who ultimately started NFL games in the same year. He lost them both at the same time. Also made me forget Kyle Allen was there. Yes. Like that, that's Johnny Manziel is one thing, but Kyle Allen was supposed to be what Johnny Manziel ended up being. Now, Sumlin inherited, think, we don't talk about this nearly enough. Mm. Sumlin inherited an offense with five first round picks on it. Five guys who became Mike first Evans, round picks. Johnny Mike Manziel. Evans, Johnny Manziel, 
Luke Jokel, Jake Matthews, and Agboyhi. We didn't even get to Kristen Michael. Ooh, yeah. My, my, my daddy can't wait to come through here. He is a Seattle Seahawks fan. He he going to yell at me, but that's that's me. I've been waiting for years. It took me forever to give up on Kristen Michael putting it all together. He, he became the successor to Derek McFadden for me. This guy that I'm just like, hey, man, just you wait. This year he's going to put it all together. We all got that guy. This is the year he's going to put it all together. Man, look, I that dude is all over college football for me. Right. That, that's the thing. I'd be I'd be holding water for some of these dudes. Matter of fact, Jalen came through way before I thought Jalen was going to come through because I was prepared to hold some water for him, too. <laughs> on, on the on the Houston bit, though, like like right fast, like. They get to the Big 12. They don't feel great to me, but to your point, they got a Heisman winner. Who won the Heisman trophy without playing on TV? Yes, I, I still need somebody to explain to me. How you win the Heisman Trophy without playing on TV in 1989? I'll tell you but, how. I'll, I'll but, tell you how. The runner-up went to Indiana. If I'm not mistaken, Anthony Thompson was the runner-up that year, and there's that's the only explanation. I want to do a documentary about this, by the way, because that is such a fascinating question. Not just not on TV in the aftermath of a gigantic scandal for that university. Well, but it, they were put. He had a game where he threw for 500 yards and a half. Like they were doing things nobody knew was possible. But I mean, and then David Klingler came along and did the same damn thing. Did nobody care? Right. Well, no, no. The problem was David Klingler was on television, and they watched Texas blow them out of the stadium. I want to say it was like 50 to 10. That's what happened to David Klingler. He got invited to New York. Like he got to take the trip. He got to be a first round pick too. Man, I I thought. I thought that game was going to be such a bigger deal than it ended up being Texas Houston because they were making Texas go to Houston on their last year. I'm going, Hey, look, this, this for me is all I wanted. And as far as y'all can't stand each other and it just didn't yes. go the way that I thought it was going to go. But that also kind of speaks to what are you supposed to do with these 16 team conferences, right? With these 18 team conferences, we got a bunch of dudes that just don't understand. You are supposed to hate them. Why? We ain't yeah. played them in like 30 years. Don't matter 20 years, you know, Houston, but that's the right. point, right? Now I got, I'm going to have to watch Cal play North Carolina Look, in football. This is the one. And I don't think people are talking about this nearly enough. Um, Cal and Stanford are going to be terrible. I think S out of like, I don't know how SMU is going to work this out, but I'm just asking why in the world, if I had the option to go into play anywhere else, would I go play somewhere where I know we're going to be taking all of these crazy road trips like i just don't see how they can stay competitive with and of course with stanford where they're not going to have the nil machine to get this done and i don't feel like cal has got the booster class that cares enough about this either how they're going to have to legitimately at some point in the next 20 years think about moving down to one double a because i think they're going to be laughing stocks playing in the acc all right so number one that whole we offer 40 dudes uh at stanford thing that ain't gonna that ain't that ain't gonna float you know why it ain't going to float? Because Florida State wanted more than you. Now, they want out, but they wanted more than you. Clemson wanted more than you, right? North yeah. Carolina is a better football program than Cal and Stanford right now, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around that, right? Because that's that's not supposed to be what this is, right? And if you were University of Virginia, you chomp it at the bit to go beat up on Stanford because uh, you know that that's, what, that's all you're there to do. We are Thomas Jefferson's University. We're going to stop out this Ivy League on the West Coast. But they weren't even competitive. Not real. I just take that back. Let me step back. They have not been competitive the last five years. And it's been bad. Like, it's been, like, when you say not competitive, they've been bad. Like, Shaw, the the early run of the Shaw era is, I think we say without question, the greatest period in the history of Stanford football. Like, it, it and it continued after Andrew Luck. You can't just point it there. They did an amazing job recruiting there. And under the old paradigm, you could do all right recruiting there because you're like, hey, man you're going to get to go to Stanford, right? And we can tell you what all these things, so you get kids that wanted to go to Stanford in the first place, and then you could get them in. So you can get a Christian McCaffrey, for example, right? Like they had a bunch of those guys. They were getting five-star uh, quarterbacks. You'll always be able to get an offensive line because they tend to be a little bit geekier. So you can get somebody to decide to go there, go Northwestern, like all those schools. You can pull that off and get like first-round caliber talent. You can coach them up. You can teach them up. You can do all that. But now you're gonna have to take those smart kids and try to explain to them why flying three thousand miles every other week is what they go is, is what they should do, and that's just not happening. I'm familiar. I think. I think. I'm. Let me. Let me not speak for you. I'm familiar with how you, I think you feel about Notre Dame. 
Yes. But the thing that bothers me about the ACC is that they still remain – they let this open marriage stay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Given what Notre Dame is about, given how Notre Dame wants to move, given what Notre Dame is going to mean for the ACC and how they're going to be propping up all their other institutions around that football property, how are we supposed to deal with Notre Dame independence? I'm going to go do my own thing, but you know, when it's time to go get my money, I'm going to come see you. In this new ACC, where you're talking about, yeah, you got to make these trips, but Notre Dame ain't going to try to make them trip. Notre Dame wants to travel to where Notre Dame is. Yeah, and I think Notre Dame is actually the school that's best equipped for this new ACC world order because they're kind of in the middle, right? Like Notre Dame and Louisville. And by the way, there's going to be some real class clack. Class clashes with Stanford going to visit some of these schools like Louisville, Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina State, even uh, Virginia Tech. It's going to be very interesting uh, seeing some of the interactions of amongst the peoples at some of these games. Um, but you're right. With well, you, you just at you some know. point Notre Dame's going to have to join. They're going to have to at some well, point. Well, yeah, they have to. But you also like you made a point there that I kind of want to touch on. I got Palo Alto going to Blacksburg. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, now I would like to see it. I, 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 I would like to see it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like when people tell me Russell Wilson is from Richmond, I'm like, you saying that like it's tide water. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. But also, like, are, am I foolish to believe that Stanford, Cal, might go up to what used to be tide water and try to go get dudes because. This is actually something you put me on with, right? Which is, I want to be putting out guys for the better part of 30 years, but yeah. it doesn't feel that way in the last 10. It doesn't. And they don't, you know, and it's again, it's the recruiting no man's land. It's not really close to anything. Like now that there are more of these Virginia FBS schools, I don't know who wins this contest anymore, but for the longest, the closest uh, 1A school was East Carolina. East Carolina got Michael Vick on campus for a visit. Like that's that's what's going on over there. It's always no man's land. When North Carolina is up, they are typically recruiting the Tidewater. The Mac, the previous Mac Brown era, that's what they were doing. When Virginia Tech was up, they were recruiting in the Tidewater. When they hired Mike London in Virginia, is because he was from Hampton, Virginia, and they thought that he could get him in there. Can Stanford get guys there that they can get in? Like I don't know how hard it is to get guys into Cal, but I know it ain't easy to get them into Stanford. Like, can they get those guys? I think you would have to want it to win in football. I I, I ain't seen Stanford. Yeah, and do they it. want it, right? Because okay. Virginia, look, the University of Virginia, they find ways to get those boys in. They be down there at Hargrave and all them other schools. Like, they'll get them in, right? Stanford hasn't made that same decision. And the truth is, they're going to have to decide, do they feel like playing college football? And to your point, they might decide that's just not who they want to be. They might want to be like the University of San Diego, right? Just right. own the Pioneer League, don't give no scholarships, you know, go do what you do, try to win whatever that cup is that they win for having swimming teams that are good and whatnot, but also high academic standards. I don't care, right? Mm -hmm. the, the last time I thought about Stanford was actually Tara Vanderweek. She, she, she retired. And then I was like, oh, they still got that going on over there, huh? <laughs> okay, Stanford, I see you on the ACC. Before I get out of here, it's one thing that I do want to get your perspective on, particularly at this moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put everybody on to a piece that Bo wrote in Vanity Fair, right, under the uh, leadership of one ta coach. Who... I ain't done right? that. I'm crazy, just, hey, right? Look. <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying? That's crazy, right? That's crazy, like, dude, right? <laughs> I'm, I rarely show my envy or my jealousy. But, dog, like I looked at that and I said, Damn. And you got to write about a topic that is still very they, look, look, look. Flexing on me. Look at that. It is, it is it is one of several copies I have here stacked up at the desk. Oh man. All right. So so that, right? But what you're writing about is basically this moment that we're having right now, right? We're talking about player empowerment, player advancement, play, player movement is what how I come to think about it. And we are recording this show. On the first day of what is spring transfer transfer portal period, which is a term that nobody would have understood six years, seven years ago, right. right? Knowing what this new Big Ten, this new SEC, ACC, Big 12 are going to be, the disillusion of the Pac-12, which I thought would have been 
we would have never thought about that 10 years ago, right? It's conference champions, yada, yada, yada. Conference Jackie Robinson, conference to Mike Garrett. Mike Garrett would say that, not me. But who else? I, who else? Who, what, who else won a Heisman Trophy at USC? What, who, who else? Who else? Who else? Charles White? Yeah, 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 yeah. Him too. Him too. Him too. I feel like there was one in the middle. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, 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 Orenthal James? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It happens. Yeah, I, well, yeah, happens. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes. But <laughs> what a time. What a time. You know, of all, and of all things to get in trouble for, you took back what was already yours. Yes. That's yes. the thing we decided to. Yes. We, I was we, at an interracial wedding this weekend, and I just wanted to jump in and be like, hey, 2,000 yards, huh? And just see what happened and walk away. The uh, the Buffalo Bills finest. Yeah, like wow, the naked gun. That was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm in I'm I'm in Oklahoma. You know this, so I'm a, yes. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna trot that one out, and we're gonna see how I go. How about that? <laughs> we'll see how I go. I'll report back. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> what do you think about this unprecedented movement where dudes not only are going to transfer multiple times? But also transferring for how much can I get? Not for playing time, but how much money can you spend on me to come to school to play for you? Yo, this is wild, man. And I think that what we've got is a result of you treat the players bad for such a long time and you treat them unfairly that it all like the dam burst all at one time and nobody planned for it. Like this all just feels kind of haphazard and it's kind of sorting out you know, where we're ultimately going to go. But the thing I always say is it is America and part of America is giving people the right to make terrible decisions. And I just feel like I look up and I just see guys making a lot of terrible decisions. And I get like going to where you can get the money. Um, I am inclined to believe that these are people who are 18 to 22. So you give them $50,000, you give them $500,000. At the end of the year, they're still going to be sitting on zero. Like they're all going to be sitting on zero. I don't feel like they're making responsible decisions with the money. I don't even, I mean, you're a kid. I don't blame you for not making these responsible decisions with the money. Um, the money has also gotten to places I didn't think it would because at first people were not getting a lot of money. Like on average, uh, we did something on Game Theory on HBO about this. On average, kids are getting like $1,000 a person. There's a lot of dudes out here that are securing a lot of money in these deals, but I'm looking at this transfer and these guys are making doing and if you ain't getting playing time where you at, the only way to get playing time somewhere else in theory is to go down, mm -hmm. right? Like you're having to go to a lesser place. And so I'll use Quinn Ewers as an example, right? Now this is an example from years before, but I think it fits uh, explaining what my concern is with a lot of these guys who are transferring. He graduated early so he could go get that money in Ohio because Texas hadn't passed his NIL legislation. He got up there. He got beat out by C.J. Stroud, and then he came back to Texas where he is now. Okay. If he stays at Ohio State and sits behind Stroud for one more year, you know what he would have been doing last year? Throwing the ball to Marvin Harrison. And you know what he'd be doing right now? Trying on his suit for the NFL draft. Instead, he's back at Texas, right? He's coming back again to play. What did you really get out of doing this? You were probably at the best play. Now, granted, we've seen some mixed results on Ohio State quarterbacks, but that was probably the best place for him to be. And so for most of these guys, I'm looking at them like, you're going to become, this isn't basketball. Mm. Like, you're going to be a junior or a senior in these programs. You're going to get reps. as a Even if you don't start as a junior, you're probably going to get reps. It's if you can't beat out a freshman as a senior, you probably don't have any business playing this game whatsoever. So where are you going? The long term money for you is in staying in one of these places and living on scholarship for the rest of your life. Right. Going to oh, I imagine there's guys in Norman and in Stillwater. They may not have even been good, but they just around because they made friends with the right people the whole time. They'll always be able to get a job. It's a car dealership right down there. You walk in. You ain't never going to have to wait for no table. Everybody's always like that to me is the best play, but I don't think, and I, I am a, you know, me, I'm a player's rights advocate. If anybody ever was, they made a mistake by letting these guys transfer and play immediately. If mm -hmm. you want to leave so bad that you're willing to sit out a year, then you should, but that's a regulation that I don't, I don't think it's helping anybody allowing these guys to go play right away. I just, I just don't think, I don't see the benefit. I don't get it. And it's chaos. Um, it's not a chaos that they should stop, though. This is what they this is what they deserve. This is what they earn. This is what this is what 
happens when guys can actually make money and you don't have a real setup for what you want to do with them because you're so afraid to call them employees because then you got to pay taxes. This is what you get. And then you kicking it down the road in a way that's just not healthy, right? Like that's that's the part that gets to me. Like I'm for a new governing body. We can do away with the NCAA. It has outlived its purpose for me, right? As soon as they severed the division in 1978, I think it outlived its purpose. As soon as Oklahoma and Georgia decided to sue, it outlived right. its purpose. As soon as we got to college football America making these deals going, hey, if Nebraska, Texas, Oklahoma decide to play in the same conference, we could all make a lot of money, right? It was outdated. But you make a really great point about Quinn Ewers because I'm thinking, what an indictment of Cal McCord who transferred to Syracuse after throwing passes to Marvin right. Harrison Jr. Right. <laughs> Yo, they look, they're like, hey, 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 this ain't. They, they gave up on the idea that he could go down, pick himself up by his bootstraps and get better. Like, that's what's so wild to me. A season like that for a guy like that at that school is supposed to be, now you go and grind and get better. Like, let me ask you this. Mm. Does Vince Young come back to Texas? Like, let's say his 04 kept going, like, not great, right? Are we sure he would have come back to Texas in 05 or would he been looking to go somewhere else? I mean, looking to go somewhere else. I don't think he would come back. Why? Yeah. Right. What? Right. They would have gave Paralu the bag, right? They'd have done whatever it took to get Paralu that money and got him there. And what does what the Vince Young story become? But hey, look, now, now that you mentioned, man, right, right, Paralu. What, what a thought there. All right. Before I let you go, let me, let me ask you this because we talk about the money and whatnot. When you saw what Kayshawn Boutte was spending on himself to gamble, and you then you looked at what he spent, what he made, and what was in the bank account. What was your thought? What a time. <laughs> that was my thought. My thought was what a time. Because, you know, the NBA has this issue now with uh, Jonte Porter. Mm -hmm. And it seems that he had been a reckless gambler. This dude it was like 9,000 bets that Boutte had put down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the way, he sure was underperforming. Remember that? He bet on like himself that, and lost. Yeah, it's not like that boy had some things on his mind. He was, uh, he was under a lot of pressure trying to make it happen. And, dog, this is just what it's going to be, man. Like, these these kids are stupid. They, it, is, it is not because they football players. It's because they're kids. They're stupid. They're going to do stupid things and think that they can get away with stupid things. And this stuff, look, I've made a comparison to cocaine and people don't like it. But the bottom line is, and this is important, you don't know how that first hit going to make you feel. And these guys going to get in here and get that hit, and that hit going to hit, and then what? They're going to keep going back because that's how things go. Hey, man, ain't no pass through. You just you just go do what you want to do. But to your point, like, hey, I deserve, uh, you deserve the right to be stupid. You want to be stupid, you go be stupid. Bomani but you know, I'm going to say this right fast, though. You're right this about the NCAA mm -hmm. when it comes to outliving its purpose. And if they're not here to crack kids' heads for getting paid, what do they do? Well, I mean, and that's you're fighting your own members now because their members are getting the attorney general involved and going, hey, we don't want you to enforce this on us. But they're your rules. Like they, they're your rules. <laughs> y'all are the instant y'all are the NCAA. <laughs> that they, that's the reason. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta tear this up. You gotta make something else, and you better make it in a hurry, because Austin versus NCAA is going to get to a decision, and you might owe these kids, these adults. These grown ass men, a whole lot of money in damages. Look, um, and, and look, they're gonna try to shut this down, and I don't know what the hell they're gonna do. Like, what what happens? And this is a serious question. What in the world happens if college football goes out of business? Can college football go out of business? Can, can it, can, it? It can just because they're so used to spending as much as they make, right? Okay. And they're doing it on purpose, right? To be clear. Right. But how do they keep all these economies that surround this? How do they keep this up? All these bonds, they're going to have to pay out on these stadiums that they built that are very soon not going to be able to hold all the people that they built all these additions for and everything else. A lot of these bills are going to come due and the revenue is not forever. Mm. Right. So, like, where do we go from here? This is it, See, now, it's chaos, man. We getting into your bag. Right. Uh, as an economics uh, professor and whatnot, because I'm not I'm not there just yet. But I can tell you this, somebody's going to find a way to make sure that SMU can beat Texas A&M. <laughs> That's going to I happen. can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens with them. Nobody wants it better than SMU. Nobody wants it better than SMU. You know, I look, look here. Go be Southern Methodist, right? Stay, stay out of my way. Stay out, you know, <laughs> take Dallas off your jersey because that's the Cowboys, no matter what you— let me. I'm. I need to get you up out of here before before you go in on Dallas right now. <laughs> oh up. yeah.
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're right. You don't need me to keep going on this one. You don't need that. The audacity of somebody to Highland Park putting Dallas on the jerseys. Good gracious. Hey, look, uh, Bomani Jones host the right time. Uh, Wave Sports and Entertainment Podcast. Subscribe to it on the YouTubes, whatnot, because, uh, well, I'm watching it. It's a great show. It's been a great show for years. Uh, Bomani's one of the legends in this game. I didn't want to take a whole lot of time saying that, but uh, that rest assured, I'm going to get to it in the intro, bro. Thanks so much for hey, doing man. this. Hey, I'm proud of you, man. Keep it rolling. You doing it, dog. That fresh-ass sweater. <laughs>